because you don't. You were bad at that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm like, okay. Oh, I'm so much more like my dad than her. And now I know why Diane was always arguing. I'm on it. <laughs> we'll be moving farther back. Uh, no, well, yeah. Or we can turn it off completely. You can all move forward, and then I, don't, I can take this off, you know? Because we, I, 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 you know, you know, as I've said before, I have a big mouth, so it's not really not an issue. But welcome. Thank you for coming out this morning. And I hope that you um, came safely and had a safe journey back home. Maybe winter is actually going to make an appearance of some kind. Uh, we'll see. Otherwise, to me, it feels like we're in March and in that transitional period again. And it's just blah. <laughs> but very few announcements today. You can see what's in the bulletin. I, I want to say that the Change for a Change, that is a program that the youth group decided to take on. Our goal uh, is to raise $600. Every congregation in the Michigan conference has been asked to raise at least that much in order to create the financial goal and our contribution to the, the national goal. And uh, this again is to uh, go to the Liberian Scholarship Program of Michigan's conference, our Liber Liberian ministry partners, and also the Children's Defense Fund and the Freedom Schools Program, which is right here in Michigan. And, and school districts that are close by, they tend to have a higher percentage of underprivileged, disadvantaged students. This helps with reading programs. Readers still read. So that they uh, get extra help if they need it or are exposed to um, books and things that, and discussions that kind of help them feel empowered. Uh, they can move forward. So that's what the program funds. And Again, our goal is 600. We're a little over 150. The money wall is out here. You can grab an envelope with a, a dollar on it that, that fits you and put it in, um, you can give it to me, you can put it in Carolyn's box. One of the other things that we're looking at doing is having another Fat Tuesday pancake dinner this year. Last year we had one as part of the youth group's fundraiser to go to Midwest Mission in June, which was, a, which was very successful, we did very well. This year, uh, we think we have an opportunity to bring in more people because it's a night that the Langsburg Community Singers will be practicing. And they tend to let people know about it, bring friends in. 
So we're still planning on doing that on Tuesday, the 21st of February from five to seven. Here is where we need your help. Our, our youth, some of them are working. We have one in robotics. We have two that come from St. John's and often are na not able to be here on weeknight events. When you only have five youth, that cuts it way down. And so we, uh, we will convene and figure out who can be here. I cannot be here. I have a leadership cohort that is starting that night with, with the group that I'm involved in that is mandatory. I uh, just found that out last week. So we're looking for some people that can help us to come in and just get set up. It's, it's informal, it's not very fancy. We're just doing pancakes and sausage. And so just getting the paper plates out, setting up the table with the toppings and help keep an eye on that, welcoming our guests. It's donation only. So there's no tickets to collect or anything like that. And just do a little cleanup afterward. It went really smoothly last year. So if any of you might be able to donate some time on that evening, uh, that would be wonderful. You can let myself know, you can let um, Pastor know, Carolyn know, and I, I really want to see that go because all the funds will go to Change for a Change, and if we do well, we can make our goal. The Care Closet, you still have the green bin out there for things that are going to the Care Closet at the elementary school. You've all been very generous, and uh, but just make sure you follow their list if you find your bulletin. They really are, are they're getting some things that just they can't use, that aren't what they need, and um, and they have to rehome those. So please try to stick to what's on the list. If you're on the coffee hour list, please see this, you'll be coming up. And we do have some birthdays this week. I don't think any of these people are here, so I won't pick on anyone, but you know all these people, so send them a note, give them a call, think positively of them on uh, something on that day. And then, of course, the list of things that's going on. Anybody have any other announcements? I just want you to know that Tom is not singing a solo today. He has stepped in in Diane's absence. We want to pray for her. She's on day four of a horrible migraine. And so he stepped up today to, to help me out with the reading. Uh, but we, we just didn't have enough choir members today. So Min Min is going to play. Um, some wonderful music for us in the spot where the chapel or the choir was going to be. And we're very grateful for that. So, Min Min, if you'd like to sh play the prelude for us, that'd be great. <laughs> Would you please stand and join me for the call to worship? It's printed in your bulletin. It's also up on the screens. The God of all creation makes us one in the flesh. Let us join hearts and voices in prayer. In Jesus Christ, we are made one in the spirit. Let us be united in truth through the same one spirit. We practice our faith in many different ways. Yet we confess one Lord, Jesus Christ. We render different forms of ministry. Yet our calling is one because Christ is undivided. Rejoice, people of God. The risen Christ is among us, calling us together at his one table. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Remain standing for our opening hymn, Star Child. It's in the faith we sing, 2095. It's a might be a new one to you, and you want to follow along, it will also be up on the screen. <laughs>
have a disagreement. It's happened to all of us, hasn't it? And sometimes you can work through it and say you're sorry and go right back to where you were because you love each other and you care about each other and you know that that's what matters. Sometimes though it can be a little bit harder because maybe they said something or did something that just hurt a little too much and you're not sure if you can really call them your friend anymore. But you know what? Here's what God says about that. We all love one another. He forgave us for all of our sins. And we can forgive others for theirs. And sometimes we have to forgive our friend, even though it's a little bit hard. And today we're going to talk about being of one mind, the same mind, in a time when people are really of different minds, but remembering that God wants us to remember who we are as believers in him. And maybe what we learn today, we can keep in mind when we have a problem with a friend in the future or a teacher or a parent or someone like that. So. Now, we are going to hear from Min Min for a little bit of music. service when we share our gifts with God. Do we have an usher that can help this morning? Susan, Dave, Bree, thank you so much.
to hear your word, and we hope that what we can give back to you today in this form will be put to good use so that other people can hear your word and see how it is from our hearts and a representation of you, Lord. Amen. church divided over leaders. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you, per you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household, have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so no one can say that you were baptized in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. And now Christ is uh, Christ crucified in God's power and wisdom. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There we go. See, I thought I was... Okay. All right. We'll get there. Misinformation is shared information that's incorrect or unverified. Disinformation is intentional untruth shared with malicious intent. So misinformation, you think it's true, but it's not. Disinformation, you know it's not true, but you say it anyway. So just to clarify, if you've always thought, well, what's the difference, or aren't they kind of the same? No, they're not. They're not at all. Other things, you know, we're, we're divided. Lack of trust in government. Political divisions. Economics. We all have an opinion about that when it comes to our money. We have a right to be. Right to say so. Human rights. And that list can be long. Mm -hmm. Homelessness, food insecurity, women's rights, poverty, injustice, war. So many things fall into human rights that we all can have our opinions about and be divided about what the solutions might be. Climate change. 
may be a believer, you may be not. Can anyone think of a time when we've been more divided? Anyone think of a time? I'm not, I'm not sure I can, and that's very scary to me. Very scary to me. It's scary to me to have an almost 21-year-old who is of a generation that has become very apathetic because they've grown up seeing shootings and seeing the government misbehaving and just seeing all these things, and they feel like, eh, one more thing. There was another mass shooting last night in Los Angeles. Ten more people killed, and ten people in the hospital in critical condition, potentially. The shooter has still not been caught as of when I got here this morning. And we're very divided on what should be done about that. It can feel like we're walking on eggshells with people we used to get along with just fine. Are there people that are in your life that you used to be able to talk to, no problem, have a conversation, and now not so much because of some of these things, and you're like, mm, yeah, we don't really get along, and it's just too difficult, and I'm not going to jeopardize the relationship, so I expect I'd be really careful what I say. Can you use that one? Sure. Sorry, it's just clicking out. It seems like we've forgotten Peter's words from 1 Corinthians that we just heard. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I appeal to all of you to agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Now let's be realistic. This is probably unlikely to happen all the time under any circumstances. Uh, you think about your spouse, your co-workers, uh, friends, whatnot, you are going to have different opinions. That, that, I don't think that's what this is about. I don't think that's what is being said here. But who or what do we follow that divides us from our focus on Christ and his teaching? Do we follow our friends and neighbors and possibly go along with their beliefs and their biases because, well, they're our friends and our neighbors and, you know, it's just, yeah, okay, maybe that's all right. I don't really know what to think. I said, I trust them. All right. New sound bites. We believe everything we hear when we don't really know if it's credible or where it came from. What are at least some of the things that might be dividing us? Politicians and pundits. Internet, social media, because we all know that if we've seen or heard it on the internet, it must be true, right? Abraham Lincoln said that. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln said that. If someone posts something on Facebook and, wow, wow, whoa, I better share this. You don't know where it came from, or it sounds a little too out there, probably misinformation or disinformation. These are things that are dividing us. Do you think our own prejudices could be dividing us? The things that we ourselves feel and think about situations and the way the world is, or the way things are in the church, or what our neighbors might be doing, I think that's a possibility too, and it can we can forget that no, we are called to maybe that's where we are, but no, God doesn't want us judging others. His teachings are filled, not filled with misinformation or dis dis disinformation, excuse me. They're filled with love, hope, and grace. Let us remember this when we start to pull away or feel isolated or not united, whether it be with our brethren in Christ or otherwise. Peter spoke in verse 18 about Christ being crucified in God's power and wisdom. For the message of the cross is just foolishness to those who are simply perishing. But to those of us being saved, those who are believers, it is the power of God. If you believe that Jesus died on the Christ for you, that it was God's giving of his only son for forgiveness of our sins. You are on the side of power. If you don't believe in that, then Peter's word to Corinthians was, 
you're just simply perishing. So which side do we want to be on? Foolishness or power? Do we simply want to perish or do we want to be saved? Corinthians, as I, as I learned as I was going through some readings, is Greek for brothers and sisters, especially those who are fellow believers. Anybody know that? That was interesting. And he wrote these notes. Peter wrote First and Second Corinthians to the people of, of Corinth. So there was an actual community, and these people were, that was the Greek word for brothers and sisters in Christ. They have the same mind. They choose the power of being saved. Friends, we must stop the divisiveness. We must. We can't continue down this road. We have to get back to remembering the words that Tom read today, and other words that teach that that the Lord has taught us to follow and remember His grace. God will judge us for our actions, but we spend a lot of time judging others. We're all guilty of it. I do it. Everybody does it whether mindfully or not, whether you're thinking it, you're saying it. We all do it. Because again, this is hard stuff. What's one thing you can do today, today, to be more united and less divided, especially with your brothers and sisters in Christ? Can you share a positive and inspirational quote The couple I found. Society is unity in diversity. There were a couple of others, Clint, that that I had. Every day the clock resets. Your wins don't matter. Your failures don't matter. Don't stress on what was. Fight for what could be. Keep your face always toward the sunshine, and shadows will fall behind you. When you think about moving forward, remember, shadows are going to fall behind you. Do you have a favorite scripture that you could share, especially one that's full of love and hope and grace, just like Christ's teaching? Even if you only share it with yourself every day, or can you share it with somebody else? Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. That's one we heard today. Can you perform a random act of kindness? Can you do something nice for someone else just because? Can you show more respect for others, even if it means agreeing to disagree? Even if it means that you have to say, okay, well, all right, you have your view, I have my view, but I love you anyway. <laughs> Peace be with you. Can you pray alone or with someone else? Friday night, Clint and I were coming home from a date night. We were coming up uh, Chandler Road between Round Lake and Allward came over a little little hill, and there was a vehicle that had obviously gone off the road a little bit. So we thought, well, maybe this person hit a deer, something else like that. So we pulled over to stop and help. And this gentleman had been trying to turn around and went enough, far enough off the road that with all the rain and everything and the softness in the soil, he just sunk right down and he could not get out. And Clint says, I have, I have a tow rope. I have a tow rope. I'll help you. So as he was going to get the truck turned around and come back, this gentleman said, my mom just died. I just lost my mother. He was very distraught. He said, I need, I need to get back to Lansing. I don't even know which way that is. I don't even, I don't even really know where I am right now. I'm all turned around. I don't, I don't know what to do right now. And I said, can I pray with you? Is that OK? I never make an assumption that it's okay with someone. I always ask first. I don't want them to be uncomfortable. And 
So I prayed with him about that and, and for his mother. And then the more we talked with this gentleman, it became evident that perhaps there were some other things going on with him. Perhaps he was using something. Story was kind of changing, moving around. I noticed there were no plates on the vehicle. I decided to call 911 while Clint was helping him because the vehicle needed to be moved, needed to be out of the way. So they sent an officer, and this gentleman wanted to take off as soon as he found out that I had called. He couldn't start his vehicle once we got it pulled out. He couldn't, he, he couldn't go anywhere. When I said that I had called an officer so they could come and help him and maybe give him a jump because we didn't have jumper cables, we were trying to stall him because we did not want him to leave, go anywhere. We certainly didn't want him driving anywhere. He got very upset and he said, will you give us a ride, will you just give me a ride, just give me a ride to Lansing. And I said, well, I don't think we're very comfortable with that right now. Um, but you know, they'll, they'll help you when they get here. He grabbed a bunch of things, put them in a backpack and started walking in the dark, in dark clothing. And soon thereafter, I called back 911, explained what was going on, what had changed with the situation. And not long after that, the officer came over the hill. He had already picked the gentleman up, thankfully. And unfortunately, this gentleman was a known to police officers. His story was changing. Some more things were coming out that didn't make sense. But you know what? I've been praying for that man ever since because it would be really easy to make a judgment about, oh, well, alcoholic, drug user, good Lord, get your life together. Police know him, obviously gets in trouble. It'd be really easy to go down that path and move away from the teachings of God that call us to provide grace, love, and kindness. I can't solve or take care of whatever that gentleman's issues are, but I can still pray for him and think about what is he going through and how can I be someone that brings together the teachings of what God has in this world today, that that man finds a path, that God opens a door, instead of staying on the other side of a divide, how can I still try to find a way, and not just me, but Clint, you know, we were both there with him and trying to help. But I still think about him, and there's a lot of people out there like that that we could just walk away from and make judgments about. That isn't what we're being called to do here. We're being called to be of the same mind, not to be divided, but to stay united as Christians. And how does that look like when we go out into the world? So we just talked about, or I just suggested some things that maybe you could do today to work on unity and divisiveness, getting away from it. But how about tomorrow? Or the next time you feel yourself drawn into a debate that could be hurtful, contrary, or just not very Christian. So I invite you to pause today, tomorrow, this week, once, twice, however many times, Consider opportunities for how you can think differently. Change for the better starts with all of us. We can't wait for someone else to do it, especially now. We can't sit there in our own thoughts and our own minds and say, well, it, that person needs to change. That person needs to do this. They should do that. But can we maybe say, you know, here's something I can do that can show that I'm a believer, that I'm on the side of wanting to be saved, the side of the power of God. This is really hard stuff, everybody. It's really hard stuff. I'm not standing up here, here today trying to make it sound easier, like, okay, let's get the switch. Let's get the switch when you walk out of here. Shiny, happy people. You know the R.A.M. song? We're all programmed. We're set in our ways. We're afraid to challenge the divisiveness with actions instead of words. I certainly am. 
apart, especially if you think somebody's gonna blow back at you. Whoa. Nope, not getting into this. Not getting into this. My dad does that. We'll be talking on the phone, and he'll throw in little things. Because we're on the opposite side of a lot of things. But I have to remember that it's my dad. He's always been that way. He is who he is. I love him. But I don't, I can't take the bait. Because I know it will go down a road that won't be a good conversation. My dad is almost 80. I don't know how much time left there is. Could be 20 years, could be one year. Who knows? I don't want it to always be a dispute, but it's hard because he, he's just always poking. And he makes sure that every time we talk, we know what his thoughts and his beliefs and his feelings are and everything. I've heard it a million times. That's who he is. I just have to try and move on, change the subject, and pray that God gives me the strength to continue to hold my <laughs> But let's invite people back into a spirit of oneness. Invite someone with whom you don't always agree to lunch or coffee just to hang out. Get back to that common ground that you've always had. Apologize to someone you may, to whom you may have said or done something that was hurtful or that changed your relationship maybe to be a little bit more negative, a little bit more rocky, those eggshells I talked about earlier. Find a cause whose mission it is to do some kind of good in the world and support it in whatever way you can. There's a million of them out there. A lot of them right here in our own backyard. Remember which side of the cross you've decided to be on. Perishing out of foolishness or being saved for the power of God. Pray for our neighbors, our elected officials, our schools, people that are involved in violence, people who are facing war, People who've been led down the wrong path for whatever reason. And don't forget to pray for yourself. Give yourself that love too. And at that, that conversation with the Lord. And asking him to be with you. Especially when you're on a walk. Or you're not really sure where to go. Just say, I don't know, Lord, I don't know. Help me. As the song goes, here I am, Lord. To close today, another passage from Corinthians seems appropriate as we think about how we can get back to having the same mind, and you all know this one. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is Now, if you will stand for our hymn of many gifts, one spirit.
perhaps today you found some people and names already in the bulletin for whom we have been lifting up prayer. But what else do you bring with you today? Whom else do you bring with you today that we need to lift up? Or what celebration and joys do you have at this time? I know that we've been asked by Holyfield to lift up Tori's friend, Wayne, who is in the hospital with treat undergoing treatment to help stave off an infection that they hope does not spread through his body. So please lift up Dwayne. Lift up the people from the shooting, Lord, and let us find a way to work through this to be safer, to find help for people with mental health issues, to look at this systemically so that we can have long-term solutions. Lord, once again, we come to you. You know what's in our hearts. You know whether we say it out loud or we don't. It's all right because you're hearing us. And though we may wait longer than we want to sometimes on your answer, we know that it will come and help us to open our eyes to that. Lord, we lift up to you today, Dwayne. We lift up to you people in shootings, people that are suffering with mental health issues. We lift up to you our leaders who face finding solutions to these problems. Help us to be part of the solution. Lord, we have also many things to celebrate and be joyful for, and help us to remember that as well. Thank you for your grace and glory in our life, Lord, as we now join our voices in the prayer you taught us centuries and centuries ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and deliver us from evil, the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes we forget part of the Lord's prayer, don't we? We just take a deep breath out. All right, for our closing hymn, please stand for Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.